Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with Integrative Movement Insider. Welcome to this edition. Hope you're having a great week. Hope it started out well. This week on Two Anatomy Geeks, Jill and I, the Two Anatomy Geeks, will be discussing the flexor and extensor chains. Obviously, these two chains, these two fascial chains, are super important for maintaining upright posture, position, and the eyes level to the horizon. Oftentimes, we see clients that don't maintain optimal balance between their flexor and extensor chains. So we see common postures like this, right? Especially in our older clients. This posture is also associated with an increased risk of falling because the center of mass moves behind the feet. And then when our clients are walking, our older clients are walking, they tend to shuffle or they tend to walk and they sort of wobble side to side versus being able to be upright and then rotate, which will maintain their center of mass between their base of support or over their base of support and allow them to optimally rotate, which we'll talk about next time on this series. So one of the things we hear in the industry and many of us say, and I used to say this a lot as well, all our clients are strong here and tight here and they're weak back there. Well, just because your client is in this posture, it doesn't mean that they're strong here and weak there. Yes, they may be short through some of their structures here. They're also short through some of their structures here, like the glutes and the hamstrings. One of the best ways to lengthen the anterior chain and teach your client also how to appropriately control their flexor or anterior chain is with a sort of half kneel, if you're doing it in a kneeling position, so down on in the half kneel position, or standing. For this video, I'll do the standing version. The half kneel version is exactly the same thing, just in the half kneel position. So essentially what you're going to have your client do is once you've done your mild fascia release, which you wanna do first, once you've done your breathing, which is another big part of the upright position, we've talked about that many times here on Facebook Live, you wanna teach your client how to be here to square this, themselves up to their forward leg and maintain this position when their arms go overhead. So for example, we'll have our clients lengthen, stack the ribcage over top of the pelvis, then step back while keeping their weight over their forward leg. So that way they're in a bit of hip extension back here, so they're lengthening one side of the chain, and now they can work here and now reach their arms overhead. Versus what we see a lot of our clients doing is just doing this mindless stuff here, which is really just not training the fascial system appropriately, and they're just hyperextending their spine where they're already hypermobile. So teach your client how to align head and neck over the rib cage, over the pelvis. Then keep their weight on their stationary leg, keep their pelvis squared up to the stationary leg. Then they're here, now they can reach overhead. Just this motion here will be challenging for a lot of your clients, both for their balance as well as lengthening through their anterior chain. So they just do several repetitions, they can switch legs, however, focus on the tighter of the two hips. So my left hip is my tighter hip, so I'm focusing more with the left hip back in slight extension. Again, I'm squared up, I'm not allowing my pelvis to rotate, I'm staying squared up to the forward leg. Now to make it even more challenging, this one I'll do in a half kneel position. I'm gonna grab my pad here so that way I can kneel on the pad. I'm also going to grab some resistance from behind me. This is a great way to train isometric control of the anterior chain. So again, I'm gonna start out with good alignment here. So nice alignment, head and neck, rib cage over top of the pelvis. I'm gonna step into a half kneel. Again, keeping myself squared up to the forward leg. From here, it's breathing in, breathing out, arms come straight up overhead. And again, the band is pulling me back into extension. I wanna keep myself aligned and controlled. So it's breathing in, Breathing out and controlling. Breathing in, breathing out and controlling. One of the best ways we found to improve shoulder flexion, control of the thoracopelvic cylinder, the rib cage over top of the pelvis, to lengthen the anterior chain while also teaching the anterior chain to control excessive extension. 
one of the best patterns for training that fascial chain, the anterior fascial chain, improving length of the fascia over the hip flexors, and teaching your client, more importantly, how to control that position. Because what our clients need is not just ability to lengthen, but learning how to control. Because remember, this posture is a sign your client does not have confidence in controlling their ability to be up here where they belong. So it's creating length, creating the breath to maintain that length, and then training the fascial chains through a variety of positions and resistance so that way they maintain that ability to be upright and control their posture so that way they maintain better uprightness, they maintain better ability to walk, balance, and control their center of mass, and that's how you help them prevent falls and lower the risk of falling and improve their the way they walk and their walking speed, both of which fall prevention as well as walking speed is directly correlated to longevity and sustainability in our older clients' lives. So this is Dr. Evan Osar, one of the two anatomy geeks. Hope you enjoyed the session. We'll see you this Saturday for part two of our three-part series on the anatomy of the fascial system, where Jill and I, the two anatomy geeks, will take you through the fascial system, the flexor and extensor chains. Next week, we go into the rotation, the oblique chains, the anterior and posterior oblique chains. We'll teach you about fascia. We'll even teach you about this week. We're going to share with you some of the research about fascia and how some of the things that people say about fascial training and fascial stretching and myofascial release may not be as accurate as we think it is. So join us. We'd love to have you. We're going to, Mary will put the link above this video, below it, later on today. And we look forward to seeing you in this three-part series. All sessions are recorded. And then once the sessions are finished, the three sessions are over, we submit them for CEC, so you'll get CECs before the end of the year as well. So, Dr. Evan Osar, we look forward to seeing you this Saturday on Two Anatomy Geeks. Hello, my friend Rahul from India. Glad to have you on here. My buddy Steven from Chicago, Illinois, Integrated Movement Specialist. My good friend, as well as my model for my book. So, appreciate you, buddy, as well. Appreciate all of the Integrated Movement Specialists that are on Facebook Live with me, as well as part of our community. Make it a great day, get out there and serve. Today is National Peace Day, and I love this quote by St. Francis. It's part of the prayer to St. Francis. He says, Lord, make me instruments of your peace. He doesn't ask for peace, he asks for God to make him an instrument of his peace. So as you go out there, be an instrument of peace for your clients, for your community, for your family, versus asking for things to be more peaceful, and that's how we, you and I, can make a difference in our communities and in the world. Make it a great day. We look forward to seeing you next time at Integrative Movement Insider. Take care.